is uh, Andre. Um, two days or two days before this test match, you uh, you made remarks that um, you were not so sure about the conditions, and then you said you're going to monitor them um, for in uh, during the first day of the match. I mean, how have they panned out uh, so far in, in, in the third day? Uh, as well as the um, conditions, uh, they're pretty typical. Uh, pitch I think they expect at Bulo Bayo, and uh, it's played consistently. Okay, so coach, you have one person have a double century, and of course you have early weekends. As a coach, how does that make you feel? Uh, obviously, uh, the entire team Enjoy uh, in a way to teach, not only school his first hundred, but then comforting that he got the world. And obviously, it was special not only for him, for him, but the entire team. Um, and obviously, you know, the fact that we have lost so much time in the game, we feel that we need to give ourselves a chance to, to get the kids on the pitch that, um, you know, as we have seen, has been good for batting. Um, so, the fact that we have taken three wickets um, is quite good. Obviously, we've been able to uh, get some early inroads into the batting. But it will require a lot more discipline from us tomorrow um, to ensure that we are able to maintain the pressure. Do you think that uh, you're going to have uh, five days of, uh, of this? Sorry, can I, can I can ask if you can get the mic back? So uh, the the question I want to ask is uh, the, the, uh, the fact that Tej had played 50 odd first class matches before he made his test and he's come in and he's got into test cricket like he's been playing it for such a long time. But what does it say about the strength of first-class cricket in the West Indies? Uh, you know, the standard of our cricket um, is, is generally pretty good. I think um, what we could potentially do is actually play more of it. Um, and the fact that uh, we do have some of our most experienced players playing um, occasionally, it would be good to have them playing the majority of matches. But the first class season does give uh, young players an opportunity to play at a very high level at that stage. Um, and as you've seen, TH having played 50 odd first class matches, he's been able to uh, convert and has you know, seemed very comfortable um, at this level. Coach, actually, right, just take a look at the approach in which you guys had coming into this test match. Um, you guys a bit slow to start and then you kind of picked up the tempo going on. Then later on coming into today, you guys were more attacking and in that it created opportunities for Zimbabwe to pick up the six wickets that they managed to, to, to pick up. In the way in which you lost the wickets, were you concerned with the type of shot selections that you guys played or you just wanted to get to that score which you guys thought would be enough for you to put Zimbabwe back into it? As it relates to the wickets that fell towards the back end, um, you know, we wanted to actually uh, up the ante a bit. So obviously you're taking more risks and um, the opportunity for wickets falling is always uh, possible. Um, but in terms of how the owners play, um, they play how they play. Um, it was very important um, for us obviously for them to set that foundation, not only on day one, but to continue on day two. Um, and, and the way we play towards the back end, um, is the way we want to, to play. In other words, we want to keep the game moving forward. Um, and, and, and the players, you know, they would have gotten out playing attacking shots. They have the full backing of myself and the team um, that they're playing towards the team plan. Um, so we are quite, yeah, obviously it's a wicket way down, um, but it was obviously we wanted to, to, to keep the pace moving forward. Our final question questions for me is a two-pronged question. The first one, the importance of that wicket right at the end, and secondly, the balance that, um, how is it, how is the balance between, uh, the, has the balance been in the West Indies? You've had a couple of players who won the SA20 and they made themselves available for the test. That's an ongoing conversation among a lot of boards, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I want to just chime in on the word you use, conversation. Um, obviously, with, with so much cricket available to, to players around the world, um, I believe a uh, good conversation with the players and, and coming to a happy medium where everyone is benefits. Obviously, we want to keep growing their cricket in the West Indies, but obviously, we want the players to be able to play in the franchise tournaments because they also get to play with 
with um, their peers, other international players, and also improving those areas. Um, so I think those conversations need to be ongoing. Um, and, and then once there's clarity um, around you know, how much players are available throughout the year, um, then we'll get to able to plan. And then the final uh, wicket. Sorry? The wicket at the end, how important it was. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, in terms of momentum going into uh, the end of the day's play, um, that is that is good, especially in a pitch like that, where you obviously will need to be disciplined as a bowler. Um, you know, you, you don't necessarily blast someone out on a pitch like this, um, but you get, if you're able to, be, to remain disciplined and, and set appropriate fields, then you're, you should be able to apply enough pressure. Um, you know, and, and we're happy that obviously at the end of the day, having declared that uh, we were able to take three weeks. Right, uh, Andre, almost a similar question. I don't know if you can answer it differently. Does it uh, concern you that um, you, you're losing all the space to, to white ball? You've got about more than 10 players currently in Dubai at the moment. And uh, do you think that um, among those players, you, 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 you possibly could have um, some of them playing test cricket at the moment? I'm sure if you were to ask um, any one of those players about playing for the West Indies, they would say yes, they want to play for the West Indies. Um, but obviously, I'll go back to the word um, that your, your colleague mentioned about conversations. I think uh, that is something you know, that I also want to reiterate that we need to have those conversations uh, and work out with each individual player that we have in our separate pools or in our sector to be able to, to come to an agreement um, and to be able to work out a mutually beneficial arrangement. Um, because obviously these are also professional players. You know, we should not forget that. But obviously, as, as West Indies, we want to have as many of our best players available to us as often as possible. Um, and that, I believe, comes out of the same conversation, just working that out um, over time. And being, being, being clear, just providing a lot of clarity on both sides.